Dune. How do you take a story from this book here and turn it into a board game? This is a question that you and I are going to explore together and see how they did it. So stay tuned and find out. Try to imagine that you are in the 70s now and you don't have an Atari. But there were plenty of board games out there that you could play in the 70s, but you wanted a little challenge. And I don't mean Dungeons and Dragons. And you want something different, a little sci-fi to it maybe. Like this one here, Dune the Board Game. This game came out 1979. And Star Wars came out 1977. Coincidence? I think not. But that doesn't matter. The cover art on this box looks amazing. It set the imagination wild of strange worlds. It really brings out the 70s style. The board game was made by a company called Avalanche Hill. Can you imagine sitting in a meeting, pitching ideas about a new strategy game from this book here? I would have loved to sit in that meeting. So let's take a look at the game itself and see how this game is played. I will explain each item throughout the video. It is a little strange that they made the board game with two pieces here. And these here are the spice cards where good and bad things can happen throughout the game. And these here are the treachery cards. They will contain a lot of good weapons and a lot of strategy to win this game but they also contain useless cards, which you need to get rid of quickly. And these things here needs to be folded so they get the shape of a box. If we look closely on top of this box, we can read some rules and some advantage where each player can do different things in this game. There can be up to six players, Bene Gesserit, the Emperor, the Fremen, the Guild, the Harkonnens and the Atreides. But today we're only going to be four players. Each player gets a piece of paper where they can see how many rounds there are, where they can also read some simple rules. And down here we can see all the leaders of the houses. There's more information behind this paper that you can read. And this is the rule book, which goes into details of what all the rules are. Now this requires some reading and understanding. And these here are the tokens. They're kind of like soldiers in this game. Each house gets 10 tokens and the guild only gets 5. But they do get 13 reserves and the other only gets 10. And these number here are the spices. The Fremen only gets 3 spices and the guild only gets 5. And that is because they will have special advantage over the others which we will get into later. The red areas on the board are called capitals of the cities. Every player will now place their tokens that they are allowed to put on the board. But before they can start, they have to place the storm on the board, right here where it says start storm. Now before they get these characters, also known as leaders, each player needs to choose their treachery character of spies. I need to shovel these so they are mixed. And place them in the middle of the board. A player will now choose four leaders from the top and pick one as their spy on the payroll from the other houses and not your own. This is where the Harkonnens has the advantage. They get to pick more leaders. In the first round, the storm needs to circle around the board. To do this, where the storm is, where the closest circles from both sides, two players have to spin these wheels. They can choose whatever numbers they want from 0 to 20. And it adds up to 31 turns. The storm will now reach Red Chasm. Luckily, there were no players there. And now it is time to pick a spice card. The card shows we need to place 8 spice on broken land. Everyone gets to pick a treachery card, but the Harkonnens gets to pick 2 cards. And now it's time for the bidding round. But the Atreides has the advantage here. They get to see every first card before the others can bid on it. Now the one who is next to the storm on the dot gets to bid first. A player can choose to bid with one or more spices. 
The guild would like to bid one spice for the first card. The Harkonnens are gonna pass. I'm gonna bid two spices. Then I'll bid three spices. I'll pass. I'm gonna pass. And I guess I get the card. And this is how it's going to be for every round. And now to the next move. The revival and the movement round. You can buy tokens with spice in your reserves, which will go to the spice bank. The guild purchases four tokens with only two spices. And he places his tokens on Hibernite, Rage, Siege. And the Harkonnens are now going to move some of their tokens to collect the spice. Now he can't get the spice yet, not until the end of the round. Unless he gets challenged by another player where they have to do battle for the spice. Now the Fremens, they have the advantage. They don't have to pay for the reserves to get the tokens on the board, since they are part of the planet Arrakis. Onto any territory, within two territories, including the Great Flood. And if a worm card should ever be picked, and it happens to be where the Fremens are, they can actually move their troops away from the worm. Now that everyone has moved their tokens, it is now time for the battle round. And the first battle will be the guild versus the Fremen. And this is where they're going to use the battle wheel. And you can use a leader and a card here. If you have a useless card, get rid of it, so you can get a better card next time you pick. And here the Fremen won of a heavily cost of tokens. Every token and leader that dies goes to Benny Talalaxu Tank. But if you win the round, you get to keep the card. When it comes to the Battle of the Spice, whoever wins this battle can only collect the spice after the round has ended. And as we can see here, the Harkonnen won this battle, but has only one token left. Which means, at the end of this round, he can only collect three spices. The Harkonnens are not happy. And now to the second round. The guild uses a treachery card, which is a weather control card, which means he can control where the weather should go, and he places it here, which means that any player that's in this region could move away or entering the storm. And again, the spice must flow. Six goes to Hacker Basin. In each round, if anyone says, Choen Charity. They will receive two spices of charity. And once again, they have to bid on a treachery card, which they do on every turn. Because there's been some battles in the first round, they all receive some of their tokens back. In the second round, depending on how many tokens they've lost, and what their abilities allows them to get. While the players are moving around with their tokens, as you can see on the board, it is really becoming a battlefield here. And while they're moving around their tokens, they're slowly starting to talk about the possibility of becoming alliance with each other, of how to win the game together. But they can only do that when a card of a worm of Shai Halud, a nexus, appears. What this card does, the worm starts to devour anything that's in the sand area. And this is where the Fremens have the advantage they get a chance to move three steps away from the sand area. And this is where an alliance can be formed or break an alliance. Before anyone shows their battle wheel, they have the ability to put down a card if they have a true Saren card that gives them the ability to ask their opponent Is Lady Jessica under your payroll? And the opponent has to say yes or no. Here the battle gets interesting. It turns out that Duncan is under the Harkonnens' payroll, as we can see here. If he didn't have Duncan under his payroll, he would have lost 5 of his tokens. Because of this, they all survived. He also received Treachery Leader's Fighting Strength in Spice. After a couple of rounds, this is where two of the players have agreed to be allies. Atreides and the Fremen against the Harkonnens and the Guild. When you're in an alliance with someone, they can share some of their resources together. And they can secretly plot their plans together. If they can hold on to free capitals in the red area throughout one round and survive the attacks from the others, they can actually win this game. 
Hmm? Once you understand how to play this game and you know how all the rules works, it actually begins to be fun to play. That is what the players told me. But like many other games, this one here has two expansion packs, the Duel and the Spiced Harvest. Now you can try to see if you can find the original board game and the expansion pack, but they have actually released this game again and some new artwork and some improvements, but you still play the game the same way. And you can also get the expansion packs, just like the original board game. But what about the other Doom games out there? Well, there's this one here, the David Lynch version from 1985. Now this board game here is played different, and it appears that in this one here you can use dice. Now I don't have this game, so I can't show you what's in the box, but you can find it on eBay, if you're interested in this one. But there's a new Doom movie, and that means a new Doom board game is out there. Now there's a store in Denmark called Fausiga, and I went to the store to see the new Doom board game. It turns out this was not the only one they made, they actually made more of them, like this one here. And this one. Now you don't have to go to the store to get it, you can actually order it online. Now I'm not going to buy these new ones out there, I was more interested in showing you guys what this original Doom board game had to offer. Well, we've now come to the end of this episode. Now stay tuned for next episode of part 3, where we're going to explore all of the old video games, and maybe even some of the new ones. Something to look forward to. I know that I am. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you on the next episode.